two. We've been following that transfer window very closely. Chelsea have just completed the biggest ever spend in a transfer window, in one transfer window, depending on how you, who your accountant is and how you add up the numbers and the add-ons and all that. Uh, the big question for you then is, uh, do the numbers add up uh, to future success in your view? Um, I, I think the way things work in football, statistically, over a period of time, the teams that spend the, spend the most money on transfers and wages usually win the competitions. That's how it works. Uh, in the case of Chelsea, it probably should work, but it may not because I think the spending has been in some ways ridiculous. I mean, it's obscene the amounts of money they've been spending. And this guy, Todd Bowley, the way he's going about it, it reminds me of trying to look at the American football. It's as if he is shaping it like American football, where you can, I think you can have 53 players in the squad, but you only tug out 48 and you play 11. And the others are all on the sideline mm. with the helmets and all that, waiting to get on for that little piece of the action. The way he's gathered up players for this manager, who was a, who was a solid, solid manager, a uh, solid fella. I'm sure he didn't want all those guys. But he also, I have to say, Tommy, it reminds me of a kid whose birthday maybe is in January and goes to the goes to the the toy shop, and he, he's let run around and he picks the, a lot of the things that he got at uh, Christmas off Santi. The same things that he already got before, just in a different colour. Like the players he's, he's signed are. Are, so many of them are in the same positions where they have players. They've loads of centre backs. The, the Baddy and Shealy, they couldn't even accommodate them in the squad for this competition now. They have so many centre backs. They've so many wingers. They've loads of wingers. And they, they won't play. They won't play tonight. They won't, won't be on the bench. And, but they don't have an out and out centre forward. You think it's been but, a scattergun kind of supermarket? Uh, yeah, well, that, sweep that's an type easy thing. word to use. But it's, it's illogical, I'd say, as well as being scattergun approach. Because the manager, uh, as I've said, is a very solid manager. He walked his way through the Brighton situation. The first two years was very steady progress, nothing dramatically diff different than what Chris Hewton was doing place-wise. And then in the third season, he had built the mould of the team to go very well. Now he goes into this club and having spent that little bit of time after Tuchel's demise, rebuilding it, picking out who he thought should play where and when, Got, got through the groove very steadily after the loss of the first game with Zagreb. He now finds that there's a heap of other players yeah. dumped on him, which I, I doubt he wanted all those extra players. And we, we will have to wait a while to see whether many of them are good enough or not. There's no doubt some of them are exceptional players, great potential, but where they're right now for Chelsea... A lot of young players, isn't there? A lot uh, of young players that he's having to experiment with to see where they're good enough now to, to get them the, the results, and they haven't been so that, far. That list of, of names went across the screen there. It took about half an hour to get <laughs> through them. I think it was 18 uh, names, if, if you want to go back to include last last summer, since the, the Bowley and Clear Lake uh, capital came came in then. Just like how difficult is that a situation? I know footballers and people in football are, are accustomed to change and people coming and going, but to have that, as Brian says, players landed on you and that size of a squad uh, to deal with, both for the players themselves and for the manager. Yeah, it's very difficult and certain for the players who are bought, bought in the summer to then find the replacements arriving already in January is, is must be difficult for them. The likes of Raheem Sterling, he's, he's now being maybe taken over by Mudrick and whether there's a huge difference in the quality of them two, I don't know because Sterling's done it for an awful long time in Europe and he's a player that you know you can rely on, you're hoping with Mudrick that he's going to become a, a, a good player but I think overall Chelsea have spent all that money without really improving their team. I think their squad has obviously improved with the depth that they've got now but when you looked at Chelsea previous to the window you thought they probably needed an out and out striker, someone who can put the ball in the back of the net and again tonight they've they've got Havertz up there, someone mm. who likes to play a little bit deeper at times and it's almost they they've signed all these players because they they could but they've not thought about the team and whether it's actually gonna improve the, the, the eleven. How, on the how much of it is is for the now.